this and good. All right. Holy smokes, that was a lot of work. So guys, topic for your notes today, Lewis dot structures. But you're going, wait a minute, we've already done Lewis dot structures. Uh-huh. But guys, you'll notice that there's a word that I skipped over in the topic for your notes today. We are not doing Lewis dot structures for atoms today. Guys, what we're going to do today is Lewis dot structures for molecules. So I'll sort of set the stage for you in a minute, but this ties back to the remediation. For those of you that are doing the remediation, one of the things that we're remediating is Lewis dot atomic structures. Because in order to do Lewis dot molecular structures, you've got to be able to do this for atoms so you can then turn them into molecules. So guys, let's remind ourselves, starting here, what kind of bonds form molecules? Covalent or ionic? Covalent bonds form molecules. Now remind yourselves of this. What types of atoms form covalent bonds? Is it metal to non-metal, non metal to metal, or non-metal to non-metal? Non-metal to non-metal. So guys, today what we're going to do is we're going to talk about when these non-metals form covalent bonds with each other, what do the molecules look like? So that's the big deal for today. Now guys, here's the trick. Think about the entire, this whole year, Guys, think about the way this class progresses. It goes new material, lecture. It goes lecture, homework, lecture, homework, lecture, maybe then a lab, then lecture, homework, lecture, homework, then a test, and it just sort of keeps repeating, right? Guys, this entire year, we have never done something twice. You know what I'm saying? We have never done new material and then said, let's spend another day on it. Well, guys, what you're going to find out is we are going to spend another day on this. It's that important. It is one of two things this year that we're going to invest two class periods in. So here's how this is going to go. I'm going to give you the background information for Lewis dot structures. We are going to draw four of these together. You're going to work on your homework. Then, guys, on Tuesday, when I see you again, we're going to grade that homework, and then we are not going to do anything else for the day. No new material. We're just going to do more of these to make sure you're really good at them, because it's that important. Okay? So, how does this go? Don't write this stuff down, but this is the idea. So, remember this? the last page of your notes if you chose to write it down last time. So guys, let me show you where we're at so you know where we're going. So here's what we know. We know that when atoms bond together, if it's a metal and a non-metal, that'll be an ionic bond. And guys, what kinds of compounds do ionic bonds make? Salt. So ionic bonds lead to salts. Now let's talk about metallic bonds. When metals get together, they're all just dumping their electrons on the floor. So what's the mental model that we use for metallic bonding? The sea of electrons, right? You guys okay with that? Okay, here's the deal. We are not going to do this anymore this year. Guys, we are not going to talk about ionic bonding anymore this year. We are not going to talk about metallic bonding anymore this year. Guys, everything we're going to do for the rest of this year will be about covalent bonds and the molecules that these things form. Get the idea? Okay, so in order for us to do this, uh-oh, let me pull, oh, I can't even pull that down. So guys, this then is how this connects together. What you're going to learn today is how to draw these Lewis dot structures for these covalently bonded molecules. You get it? Okay, so here's the way this is going to go down. So guys, to get this started, we need to talk about Lewis dot structures for atoms. So if you don't remember any of this, you may want to write this down. So thinking about Lewis dot structures for atoms, you should be able to answer these questions. Which dots appear in Lewis? What are the electrons that appear in Lewis dot structures? What do we call them? The valence electrons, right? And how many of them can there be? Eight, right? So guys, if there are eight dots, what sublevels do those dots occupy? The highest S and P, right? Okay, so how do these electrons distribute themselves in the S and P? How many in the S? Two, and how many in the P? The remaining six, right? So now let's think orbitals. How many S orbitals are there to hold two electrons? One, and what is it? Good night. <laughs> Good night. And guys, what is its shape? 
What is the shape of the S orbital? It's a sphere, right? Remember this? Guys, it's a sphere, it's a sphere, it's a sphere, it's a, it's a, it's a sphere. So the S orbital is a sphere. What is the shape of the three P orbitals? They're the dumbbells. You guys all okay? All right. So if you remember this stuff, this is where you need to start taking notes. This is the one new principle that you need to understand about valence electrons. And it's what's called the octet rule. But guys, what does the prefix oct mean? Eight. What does eight have to do with valence electrons? That's how many there can be. So guys, let's say this, and then we're going to use it for the rest of the day. So guys, the octet rule simply says this. When atoms bond together, they are most stable when their valence shell is full with eight valence electrons. But we kind of been talking about that all along, huh? This idea that atoms gain electrons to look like noble gases. The noble gases have eight valence electrons. We've been sort of chatting about this, but now we've officially said it. Guys, when atoms bond together, what they're trying to do is get eight valence electrons. Okay, you good? Keep this in the back of your mind. And guys, we're now ready to actually start drawing some of these diagrams, these Lewis dot molecular structures. You ready to go? Okay. So guys, this is the way this is going to go. In order to draw the Lewis dot structures for molecules, we understand that molecules are going to be made of atoms. And what we're going to do is we're going to link these atoms together to make molecules. So what we're going to do right now is we're going to kind of like build a set of atoms that we can then lock together to make molecules. So guys, I need you to do this in your notes. Draw the Lewis dot structures For these five atoms, grab your periodic tables if you need. And guys, we're going to pull these Lewis dot structures together in your notes. Make them fairly big, though. You can see that I've, you, you really do want to spread them across the page. Maybe if they're like an inch tall or so. Don't skimp on space. You'll see why in a minute. <clears throat> Obviously, you're going to need your periodic tables to do this. So guys, we're drawing the Lewis dot structures for hydrogen, for nitrogen, for oxygen, for chlorine, and for carbon. Notice that we're drawing the Lewis dot structures for nonmetals, right? So nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, carbon, those are all nonmetals. Why did we include hydrogen in the list if it's a metal? Remember the idea is hydrogen is freakishly strong and it can form covalent bonds. Even though technically it is a metal, it can form covalent bonds, again, as we said, because it's so strong. So guys, I'll give you another second to finish these up. And then we'll draw these together.
are you guys already done? You guys done? Oh, sorry. All right. Here, let me just build this really quick, and then we'll get in there and get going. This is eventually what you guys are going to be doing, is building these with model kits. That'll be after Thanksgiving. All right. You guys ready to go? Are you really? Okay. So here we go. So guys, let me show you the Lewis dot structures for these things to make sure you're good. So we write down the abbreviations of the elements, and then we start placing valence electrons. So guys, hydrogen is group number one. It's got one dot. Where does it go? Doesn't matter. So we'll put it there on top just because that's where I chose to put it. Now, guys, with that said, there's a word that you now need to know. Um, there's, there's a term that, well, there's a thing you've got to be able to identify. So guys, the deal is this. See that spot right there next to that one electron? So the idea is that this electron is in the 1s sublevel, right? The 1s orbital. And there could be two electrons in that 1s orbital. If we were to draw this, we would understand that hydrogen looks like this. So this spot represents that spot. Know what I'm saying? Okay, guys, that spot has a name. It is what is called a bonding site. You don't need to draw the box there. You'll never draw the box there. I just drew the box there to draw your eye to what we're talking about. And guys, that empty space is what we call a bonding site. Now realize this, guys, these are not bonding sites. Bonding sites are places where there is one, but not two electrons. Know what I'm saying? Yeah. All right. So guys, with that said, let's take a crack at nitrogen. So guys, nitrogen's got one, two, three, four, five valence electrons, right? So how do we place the electrons? The first two paired up, then unpaired, unpaired, unpaired. You guys good with that? Okay. How many bonding sites? Do you see it? We've got one, two, three bonding sites. Good? Okay. So now guys, let's do oxygen, six of valence electrons. Can I just do that? Is that okay? How many bonding sites? Two. Questions on oxygen? You guys good? Okay, so oxygen's got two bonding sites. Then guys, chlorine as a halogen has got um, seven valence electrons. Looks like so. How many bonding sites does it have? One. So guys, let me ask you a question. What do chlorine and hydrogen have in common? They both have one bonding site. Guess what you're going to find out? Hydrogen and chlorine can never be in the middle of a molecule. Why? It can only form one bond. Guys, it's a sad story, but think about it this way. If, we're try if I had you all stand up and hold hands and make a human chain, and if there was somebody in this class that was missing an arm, where would they have to be in the chain? On the end, right? Guys, hydrogen and chlorine are like one-armed people. They can't be in the middle of the chain because they can only form one bond. That's going to be important in a minute. Now, guys, let's do carbon. You ready? So carbon has got one, two, three, four electrons. So what do you know about the first two electrons? Paired up. And then the next two go unpaired like this. Does that make sense? Okay, guys, this is the one thing that we need to change about what you already know about Lewis dot structures. Guys, we are not going to draw carbon like this. Check this out. This is not the way we're going to do carbon. Write this down with me. There's a new rule that you need to know. And guys, the rule is this. Where are these top two electrons? Which sublevel? S. How about these electrons? P. Guys, here's what we're going to do, and this is only when we draw Lewis dot molecular structures. This is the Lewis dot structure for carbon as an atom, but when it bonds to form molecules, here's what happens. These electrons spread out. So we are not going to draw the S electrons paired together. We're going to draw it like this, and now how many bonding sites does carbon have? Four. That's the way we're going to do it. So guys, change your diagram of carbon and draw it like this. And now you can see that carbon has four bonding sites. Go ahead, Maddie. So if you drew it like that in the first place, it's If we were drawing it for atoms, yes. 
because realize here what we do, Maddie, is we go, the first two electrons are paired, boom, boom, then unpaired, unpaired. So the atomic structure should be like that. Okay, so guys, do you understand that one little change that we're gonna spread out these electrons as much as possible? Does that make sense? Okay, go back and do that then to all the rest of your drawings. Go back to hydrogen, nitrogen, oxygen, chlorine, and spread out the electrons as much as you can. Done? Yeah, because it doesn't change anything, right? Guys, you can't spread out one electron. That doesn't work. So now let's go to nitrogen and let's take one of these electrons and let's spread it out. Well, it's got to go somewhere, right? And regardless of where we move it, it's still going to end up paired up with someone else. So now let's spread out these electrons. Same deal. We got to put them somewhere and all these orbitals have already got one electron. No change. Spread these out. Same deal. There's nowhere to put them where they wouldn't end up paired up. So guys, this only changes the structure of elements like carbon, where initially there was one completely empty place and we can move its electron into there. You get the idea? All right. So, guys, now you have all the pieces and parts and things that you need to understand. Now, guys, we're ready to start drawing molecular structures. Here we go. Putting it all together, no pun intended, it's now time to draw these structures as molecules. So, guys, do this with me. Draw oxygen. Make it about an inch across and give yourself a little bit of space around it. Oxygen's got six valence electrons. There's no way to spread out the electrons anymore. So this is the Lewis dot structure for oxygen. Now, guys, how many bonding sites does oxygen have? Two. How many bonds is it going to form? Two. What does oxygen really like to bond with? Hydrogen, because then what does it make? Water, but what's the chemical formula for water? H2O. Why is it H2O? Because it's got two bonding sites. Get it? So here's the way, and don't write this down until I tell you. Here's how this goes down. Oxygen and hydrogen will come together. And when they do, they link together like jigsaw puzzle pieces where this bonding site in hydrogen will marry together with that bonding site in oxygen. And they come together and we now have that shared pair of electrons that creates a covalent bond, just like in the animations you saw Wednesday. Get it? Now we need another hydrogen. So another hydrogen comes in and bonds to this other site. And now we've got these two bonds and water. Good? Okay. Now, guys, here's the trick. We are not going to represent bonds as pairs of dots. We are actually, and watch, it's subtle. We are going to draw them as lines. But what do those lines represent? A pair of electrons. So go ahead and draw this. Guys, this is the way we are going to represent water. <clears throat> so we've got two pairs of electrons that are bonded and two that are not. Now, guys, check this out. How many valence electrons are around that oxygen? Do you see it? We've got two and four. What does that represent? Two and two. That oxygen has now got eight electrons. That's the octet rule. Now, guys, what about this? Does hydrogen have eight electrons around it? It doesn't. Guys, hydrogen violates the octet rule. Why can hydrogen not have eight valence electrons? What's it missing? P sublevel. It doesn't have a P sublevel, so it can only have two because all it has is an F sublevel. So hydrogen has its own little octet rule that says it wants two instead of eight. Get the idea? Okay. So guys, now there are some terms that you need to know, and now we're going to start drawing these things for real. So, so guys, these lines right here, what do they represent? Two electrons, but what are they? What are they forming? They're the bonds, right? So they have a name. These things are what are called. Oh, I'm drawing dots. Hold on. These pairs of electrons are what are called bonding or shared pairs of electrons. 
And guys, one of the things that you're going to have to be able to do today is count bonding pairs of electrons. So these are the bonding pairs, or we can call them shared pairs, either word. Now guys, what about these electrons top and left? Are they involved in bonding? They're not. So they are what are called non-bonding or lone pairs of electrons. And guys, what you're going to find out is you've got to be able to count those. This is going to become important. All right. So guys, here's the trick. You just saw how to take atoms and bring them together to form molecules. But guys, please don't write this down, but here's the deal. This is actually a great skill and it works really well. It will never fail you, but it's also very time consuming to have to draw the Lewis dot structures for the atoms in order to turn them into molecules. So as I said here, in order to draw these molecules, it actually is not necessary to draw the Lewis dot structures for the atoms if you take advantage of a couple shortcuts. Guys, when you get to college, you're going to thank me for these shortcuts. So guys, I'm going to show you shortcuts that allow you to draw these without having to draw the atoms first. So guys, I'm going to give on the next slide, I'm going to give you the list of all these shortcuts, write them down. Then we're going to do four of these together and then you're going to work on homework. So guys, what are these shortcuts? Well, we're actually going to call them steps. And guys, you want to write these down. We're going to do these over and over. So guys, step number one is this. Put all of the atoms on the paper. It's obviously in quotes. You'll see what it means. Put all of the atoms on the paper and single bond them together. Now, as you do that, there are some things you need to keep in mind. First of all, make sure that you draw them symmetrically. That's a big word. Guys, what does symmetrical mean? Same on both sides. So when you draw these atom or molecules, draw them so that they're the same on both sides. So now you're going, wait a minute, what does that mean? Guys, if you're taking notes, look up here and let me show you, and then this will make sense. So what does it mean to draw something symmetrically? Well, guys, take, for example, the NO2 molecule. You could do it like this, but that is not symmetrical. If you were to draw a line through the middle of this, you've got a nitrogen on one side and an oxygen on the other. So how do we draw these symmetrically? put the nitrogen in the middle, and now this molecule is symmetrical on both sides. Do you understand symmetrical now? Okay, so step or thought one is symmetrical. You caught up? Okay, thought number two is this. Guys, many times the order of the bonds is given in the formula for the compound. You'll see what that means in a minute. Third helpful hint, when you're putting these molecules on the paper, put carbon in the middle. Why would carbon be in the middle? Exactly right. It's got the most bonding sites. Guys, carbon has got four bonding sites. That's why it's in the middle. It has a maximum number of bonding sites. That's also why life on planet Earth is carbon. You guys know we're carbon-based life forms, right? Guys, it's because carbon has a maximum number of bonding sites, which means it can create the most complicated molecules. And life is complicated, so if life is going to be complicated, it needs to be based on an atom that can make complicated molecules. So either God is really smart or evolution did it right. And it doesn't matter how you think about it, carbon is the best choice to put in the middle of biologic molecules because it's got the most bonding sites. All right. Hint number four, halogens and hydrogen cannot be in the middle. <clears throat> H 
halogens and hydrogen cannot be in the middle. So guys, let's remind ourselves of a couple things. First of all, which elements are the halogens? Which group? Group seven. Guys, these are the halogens. How many valence electrons do they have? Seven. So how many bonding sites do they have? One. So why can hydrogen and the halogens not be in the middle? They're the one-armed man. They've only got one place they can bond, so they can't be in the middle. So when you're drawing your Lewis dot structures, never put hydrogen or the halogens in the middle. Promise? Okay. Now, guys, number two. Well, and you understand it's only one bonding site. Okay, now number two. Count all the valence electrons for every atom. And guys, as you're doing this, watch out for ions. I'll show you what that means in a minute. Then guys, step number three, spread all the unused valence electrons evenly around the molecule. And guys, when you do this, you've got to fill the halogens first. And then guys, finally, step four, check and fill octets by creating multiple bonds. And I know that you're way behind me, but this is the end of your notes and I'll let you catch up. And then guys, we're going to apply this to four examples and then you're gonna have a bucket load of time to work on these on your own. You're gonna like these, unless you don't. I think you'll like them. So guys, again, the idea is you're going to have a lot of time to work on practicing these today because that's the way to get good at them is to practice. And then guys, Tuesday, unfortunately, it's not after Thanksgiving break, so it would be morally wrong of us to put on Christmas music. But on Tuesday, you're going to come in here, grade your homework. You're going to have the entire class period to work on another set of these. We will put on some music. Just hang out, get these done. Not Christmas music. No, no. Santa gets angry at pre-Thanksgiving Christmas music. But after Thanksgiving, I will share with you the best Christmas album ever. It's not even up for debate. It is actually the best Christmas album ever. And no, it's not Alvin and the Chipmunks. Um, what's that? That's actually not a bad album. Michael Bublé is right in there. He's kind of got, it's not Michael, it's, I know, it's hard to imagine. You'll see. I know you're going to have to wait till after Thanksgiving. But you're going to, it's, it, we won't even debate it. You're just going to go, yeah, you were right. That's the best. Okay. You guys good? One through four? You all caught up? No. no? So I went down and talked with the counselors, and they said there's no way we can switch. Would it oh. if we tried to change this to that Yeah, day? that'd be great. Because it's the same day, same yeah. time, just the 28th. That'd be great. September. Yeah. I'll go down and talk to Neil. Okay. It's Neil, oh, thank Neil, you. Uh, that'd be great. Okay. okay. I'll see if I can do that. Okay. Guys, you all caught up? Good heavens. You guys realize you're not getting paid by the hour to take notes, right? What's that? No, if you guys got paid to come to school, most of you would get fired. Did I ever tell you about my dream about education? Instead of being a chemistry teacher, I've always wanted to be a chemistry coach because then I could make cuts. Could you imagine that? First day of class, gosh, thanks for trying out for chemistry. You're not quite ready for it yet. You know, why don't you do some summer camps and then maybe come back and see if it works out next year? Wouldn't that, wouldn't that be awesome? Well, at least for me. Yeah, Kat. 
See, that's something you and I share. I get paid to be here, and so do you. It's perfect. All right, you guys, are you, I don't care. We're going to get going. Here, I know I do care. Are you done? Good heavens. All right. So, guys, we are going to do four examples. Let me give you a little insider tip on these, and some of you are going to struggle with this. Guys, you got to give yourself space. You can't cram these into corners and expect this to go well. Give yourself some breathing room when you draw these. So, guys, we are going to draw NCL3. So, in order to do this, we are going to start with step one. And step one says, put these on the paper, and then it gives you, and then, well, it says, put them on the paper single bonded. But then remember the additional hints. Draw them symmetrically. Carbon, well, the order of them sometime is given in the, in the structure. That doesn't help us for this one. Then hydrogen and the halogens are never in the middle. And then what was our other hint? And Oh, and carbon is the middle, which also doesn't help. So, guys, let's think about this. One of those hints is immediately helpful because chlorine is a halogen. So what do we know? Can't go in the middle. So we are going to draw these on the paper as symmetrically as we can, and we're going to draw them without chlorine in the middle. So if chlorine's not in the middle, do this with me, nitrogen has got to be in the middle. Now, we're going to spread out these chlorines as symmetrically as we can, single bonding them together. So we'll put a chlorine there. And now, guys, trying to keep them symmetrical, we will put a chlorine there. Now, guys, notice that as we do these, the only places we can put these is top, bottom, left, and right, because these are still Lewis dot structures, and the electrons go top, bottom, left, and right. Isn't that weird that I do that? I go left and right without even thinking about it. You realize why that's weird, right? This is not my left. I'm so used to orienting what do I do to my students that left and right. That's weird. Okay, so now, guys, we've got one more chlorine, right? So where does it go, top or bottom? It doesn't matter. You could put it top. You could put it bottom. I'm going to put it on the top just so it doesn't sneak down the page, but we're going to put it on the, on the paper. Okay, so now we've done step one. We've got this on the paper all single bonded. Now, step two, count electrons, valence electrons. So guys, look, how many valence electrons does nitrogen have? Five. Write that number right there. <clears throat> now, how many valence electrons do chlorine and all of the halogens have? Seven. But there are three of them for a total of 21. So guys, that means we've got the sum of these, we've got 26 valence electrons that we can play around with. Now, how many of them are already represented on the screen? What do each one of those lines represent? Two. So that means we've already used six, which leaves us 20. Now, we're going to take those 20 electrons and we're going to spread them around this molecule. But they have to go on the halogens first. Guys, when you're placing electrons, you've got to put them on the halogens first because halogens only got one bonding site. So all the rest of its electrons have got to be unbonded. So when we place these electrons, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six fill up that chlorine. Then 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, fill up that chlorine. Then 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, fill up that chlorine. Now we've got how many electrons left? Two. We started with 20. We just placed 18. We've got two left. And those two electrons go on the nitrogen. That would then, guys, be step three. We just spread out all the unused electrons, 20 of them, and we put them on the halogens uh, first. Now, guys, step four 
is check the octet rule. Do not do this on your paper, but watch. How many electrons are around that chlorine? Eight. It's happy. How many electrons are around this chlorine? Eight. It's happy. How about this chlorine? Eight. It's happy. Now, guys, and maybe the circles are distracting. Let me get rid of them. But how many electrons are around this nitrogen? Eight, also happy. Guys, notice that these, these bonds count as electrons for both atoms. Weird, right? But now that we know that all of these have full octets, so they're all happy and done. So guys, that is what this molecule looks like, or three-dimensionally it looks like this. This is what is called nitrogen trichloride. It's actually a gas, we'll talk more later. But it actually looks like this. This is the molecule that you just built. Now, there's one more thing that you've got to do before you're completely done. This will be a part of your homework. You need to count shared and lone pairs only around the central atom. Not the whole molecule, just the central atom. So guys, how many shared pairs are on the nitrogen? One, two, three. How many lone pairs are on the nitrogen? One, and this number will always add up to four because that's the octet rule. You guys good? Questions? Yeah? Yeah. Good question. What if there's only one dot in one of these and the answer is you did something wrong? That can't happen. It does. So if you end up at a point where you've only got one dot somewhere, you made a mistake and you got to start over. Yep. All right. You guys good? Let's do another one. Here we go. The next one that we're going to do, C2H4. Step number one, put everything on the paper single bonded. Now let's talk about our rules. What do we know about hydrogen? Can't be in the middle. What do we know about carbon? Loves to be in the middle. So guys, what we're going to do is we're going to take our two carbons and we're going to put them in the middle. Now guys, please do not do this, but watch. How many hydrogens do we have? Four. Why is that a bad choice? Good, it's not symmetrical. So let's redo this in a way that makes this symmetrical. So we can put two there, and we can put two there. And guys, top, bottom, left, and right does not matter. You could put both of them top, both of them, just get two on each, doesn't matter. Okay, now guys, what's step two? Count electrons. How many valence electrons does carbon have? One, two, three, four times two is eight. How many does hydrogen have? One times four is four. Add those up and we get 12. Now, how many electrons are already represented on the page? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So ten are on the page, so we've got two left. You with me? Okay, now guys watch this. Don't do this. Why can't I do that? Because hydrogen cannot have more than two valence electrons because it doesn't have a P. So guys, once hydrogen bonds, it's done. So where do these two electrons have to go? On the carbon, which one? Doesn't matter. So I'm going to put them here. You should do that with me. Now guys, let's do step four and check the octet rule. Don't draw the circles unless you find it helpful. Guys, how many valence electrons does hydrogen have? Eight? Can have eight. It's done with two. So all the hydrogens are happy because they only need two. They don't do the octet rule. Now watch this. How many valence electrons does that carbon have? Eight. It's happy, right? Now, guys, watch this. And, Steve, I'm going to ignore you for a minute. So, guys, now watch this. How many valence electrons does that carbon have? Uh-oh. So, guys, we got a problem. 
because this carbon is good. It's got eight valence electrons, but the one on the right is not good. It's only got six. So we don't have any more electrons, right? We only had two left. That's all we get. So what can we do to give this carbon more electrons if we ain't got any more electrons? Check it out. We are going to take these electrons right here and we are going to move them into the middle. Now guys, watch what happens. This carbon has got eight and now this carbon has got eight and we just made ethylene. It looks like this. It is actually a double bonded structure. Carbon bonds to carbon twice and that gives each carbon eight electrons. Go ahead. So doesn't helium have the same rules? No, helium can't bond at all because helium is full all on its own, right? Yeah, so it's, it's, but when hydrogen forms one bond, it then takes on the electron structure of helium, but helium's already there, so it can't bond. You guys double bonds? Huh? All right, two more, oh, shared in lone pairs. So guys, let me clean up my mess. Let me uh, do this. So guys, shared in lone pairs. We still gotta do this. So, how many shared and lone pairs? Well, guys, understand, it's only on the central atom. So, which one of these atoms is central? The carbons, but it's not both of them. So, which one is it? Either one. It doesn't matter which one you pick because they're equivalent, but only pick one. So, let's pick this carbon. How many shared pairs are on that carbon? One, two, three, four. How many lone pairs? None. Now guys, imagine if we had picked the other carbon. How many shared pairs on that? Four, lone, none. See, that's why it doesn't matter. They're the same. You guys good? Okay, two more. Here we go. You're gonna like this one. NO3 with a minus one charge. Uh-oh. Guys, this is a molecule that is an ion. Oh boy, it's an ionicule. <laughs> Good night. So guys, what does the minus one tell us? One extra electron. So here we go. Let's draw this thing. So which element is going to be in the middle? the nitrogen, because if we put the oxygen in the middle, we can't make this symmetrical. Now we're going to put one, two, and then three oxygens around it. Does it matter if we put the oxygen up or down? No, I'm gonna go up, but it doesn't matter. Now we need to count electrons. How many valence electrons on nitrogen? Five. Oxygen is six. And do you guys understand where we're getting these numbers? One, two, three, four, five, six. We're counting valence electrons. So three times six is 18. But now guys, watch. The negative one charge gives us a bonus electron. So that is a total of 24, yeah. It's a bonus for the whole molecule. That negative one charge applies to the whole molecule and not just the oxygen. Yeah, good question. Okay, so guys, how many electrons are already on the board? Six. So we go 24 minus six is 18. So guys, we've got to spread these 18 electrons around this molecule. Notice that we don't have any halogens. So it really doesn't matter where we put them. It doesn't matter. So we're going to go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. You could have put two on the nitrogen and then left two off of one of the oxygens. It doesn't matter. You will always end up with the same answer. Because, guys, this is not the answer. Check this out. How many electrons on that oxygen? Eight, it's good. 
How many on this oxygen? Eight, it's good. How many on this oxygen? Eight, it's good. How many on the nitrogen? Six. So guys, we have got to give this nitrogen two more electrons, but we don't have any more to put on the paper, so what do we do? Double bond, right? But where? With which of these oxygens are we going to double bond? It doesn't matter. Just pick one. It doesn't matter where the double bond forms, so I'll just do it right here. Take these electrons off, and there we go. But guys, you could have done that in any one of these directions, because guys, the molecule actually looks like this. This is what this molecule looks like. It's actually not like this. It actually looks like this, and each one of these oxygens is equivalent to the other, and it looks like that where we've got one double bonded. So now let's do shared and lone pairs. So guys, how many shared pairs on the nitrogen? Four, lone pair zero. There we go. You getting it? You good? Let's do one more. Carbon monoxide. Horrible, terrible, terrible stuff. It's colorless. It's odorless. It is more dense than air, so it settles into basements. It's what forms when your furnace isn't running properly. And if it fills up your basement and someone's sleeping down there, it's not going to turn out well. Because, guys, you slowly suffocate in your sleep. It's yucky stuff. Every year, people die of carbon monoxide poisoning. So what does this stuff look like? Well, we've got a carbon and we've got an oxygen. So we're going to go car... Oh, that's an ugly color. Guys, we're going to go carbon, single bond, oxygen. Now let's count valence electrons, four and six for a total of 10. How many do we have on the paper already? Two, so that leaves us eight. Now we've got to get them on the paper. Where do they go? It doesn't matter. We don't have any halogens, so we can put them wherever we want. So guys, you could go six and two. You could go six and two. You could go four and four. It doesn't matter. You can't screw this up. So what do we want to do? Four and four? Okay. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Now we need to count octets. What if I don't circle it this time? How many electrons are on the carbon? Six. One, two, three, four, five, six. On the oxygen? Six. So neither one is happy, right? So now we need to complete octets. So what are we going to do? Well, we're going to take off two electrons, and we're going to move them into the middle. Now let's look. How many electrons on the oxygen? Eight, two, four, six, eight. What about on the carbon? Still six. So now we need to give some electrons back to the carbon. So what are we going to do? We're going to take two. Yeah, we're going to take two here put them there, and we just made this cute little bugger. Guys, this is carbon monoxide. It is a triple bonded structure. It looks like that. You got it? Okay. So guys, we are now done. It's time to start doing these on your own. Do, oh wait, shared and lone pair, sorry. Which atom do we choose? Carbon. Doesn't matter. Okay, let's go carbon. So we've got one, two, three shared and one lone pair. Good? Always adds up to four. Okay, guys, grab your homework and let's talk. So this is homework assignment three. But guys, while you're looking at homework assignment three, what do you notice about homework assignment four? It's kind of the same. Different molecules, right? We're going to do that on Tuesday. So guys, looking at assignment three, notice what it says. Draw the Lewis dot structures, then list shared and lone pairs. And guys, I underlined the central atoms for you so you knew which ones they were. Here's the deal. Guys, you're going to sit down to do this homework, and you're going to get cocky. You've seen me do four. I make them look easy, and you're going to jump into these, and you're just going to start scratching stuff. Not on this paper. Do it on another sheet of paper so you have room. You're going to start scratching stuff down, and you're going to get frustrated. 
Guys, you'll notice that when I did these four with you, I went through the steps. Get it on the board, single bonded together, count the electrons, spread out the unused electrons, check octets. Guys, you got to do that. You can't skip over those steps and be successful. So guys, take a deep breath. Realize you have no clue if you're good at these because you've never done any. You've only watched me do them. Slow down, follow the steps, train yourself to be good at these. Just a second. You're welcome to work in whatever groups you want. We've got 20 minutes. You probably won't get them all done. I'll post the answers on the wall. Abigail. Oh yeah, there are also, po oh, guys, hold on. There's one thing I forgot to tell you. Um, yes, you can have ions that lose electrons as well and they're positive. Guys, I totally forgot to tell you this. Watch, it's really quick. So when we did nitrate, remember this one? I forgot to mention this one thing to you. When you draw the Lewis dot structures for ions, you need to put them in brackets and write down the charge. You'll see that in the homework. When you're doing ions, they'll be in brackets and we'll write down the charge. I just forgot to mention it. Kat, you had a question. Hmm? Oh, I'll be right there. Okay, so guys, we are done. Let's get going on the homework.